And the first thing you want to do when you make curtains is measure your window. And my window is 33 inches wide and the curtain rod is 84 and a half inches uh, above the floor. So since we're going to have a banded panel going down the side of the curtain in an accent fabric that we'll get to in a second, we ha our actual cut here is going to be smaller than the completed panel. So our, our completed panel is going to be 35 inches long, so it's 2 inches longer than my 33 inch wide window. And to allow for seam allowances and hems and all that, you're going to take 2 and 3 quarters of an inch off of your completed panel measurement to get the width of fabric that you're going to need for your panel itself. So for me, that's going to be 32 inches and 1 quarter. There are a couple of different devices you can use to square off the edge of your fabric. When they cut it in the fabric store, they're just cutting it to the length you need. They're not necessarily cutting on the grain, which is what we're going to do here when we square it off. You can use a carpenter square to do this, or I'm using a quilting ruler, or you can even use a piece of cardboard and a yardstick as long as that piece of cardboard is square at a 90 degree angle. And what you're going to do is you're going to line the edge of whatever instrument you're using up with the selvage edge. And the selvage edge is the piece of fabric at the edges that um, has the markings of information about the fabric on it. We don't want to use that in the actual curtain, so we're going to be cutting that off. But we are going to use it to line up with. And you align the edge up so that it is exactly even with where your print starts and where the selvage edge stops. And that will get you right on the grain. And then I'm just going to take a special um, pencil for fabric and I'm going to mark that along the edge here. Now for my 33 inch window, I need to cut the main part of the fabric for the panel, the 32.25 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tape measure and I'm going to get it out to the correct measurement and I'm going to line the end up with the selvage edge because that is less likely to move on me. And then once I'm sure I have that lined up and try to keep it as close to the line as possible and I'm going to mark where I've got 32 and a quarter here. Now what I've done is I've lined my quilter's ruler up so that the edge of it is even with the edge of the grain line which we've marked. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark the line at 32 and a quarter inches. And I'm actually measuring, home decor fabric is 54 inches wide, so I'm actually measuring from the short side with the ruler. That way I'll be sure to that this line is always the exact same width um, from the fabric and that will help keep it on the grain. So once I've got that line marked, I'm going to move it up and I'm going to make sure that I'm still on the grain line, which I am over here and the measurement is still the same. And I'm going to mark again. And you're going to do that until you've marked uh, the entire length that your curtain is supposed to be. And for me, that is going to be 94.5 inches because to figure out the length of your curtain and also allow for hems and seam allowances, you need it to be 10 inches longer than the uh, measurement from the top of the curtain rod to the floor. So for me that's 84 and a half inches and for this one here uh, I need to cut it to 94 and a half. So now I'm just going to keep marking this and you go ahead and keep marking yours and see you once I mark 90 inches this. It's going to take a little bit of time. Once you have all your measurements marked, it's time to cut. And you're going to cut right on the line that you marked. And so make sure you have a good sharp pair of scissors for this part of the job. Now what I've done here is I laid the curtain panel out on the ground and this is after I cut off the bottom where we squared up the edge. And I've arranged it so that the tape measure is exactly at 94 and a half inches on one side of the curtain. And now I'm going to mark 
the top of the curtain where the edge of the tape measure is. And what I've done here is I have lined up the marks on the quilting ruler um, on the line that we marked for cutting and then also on the selvage edge. I'm going to mark my line and do this across the entire width of the fabric. When you're done carefully marking your top edge after measuring, go ahead and just cut down the line that you marked the same way we did when we cut off the bottom. And then when you're done with that, go ahead and cut down the side to cut out your panel. In addition to cutting down the marked line for the side of your panel, you also want to cut off the selvage edge. You want to cut it right where the selvage meets the print. You want to square up your fabric for the accent piece to the banded panel the same way you squared up the other piece of fabric for the main focal piece. And what you're going to do is no matter how wide your window is, you are going to cut a band that is six and one quarter inches wide. And you're going to need two of those unless you have an extra long window and then you might need three. So do the math and figure out how many of those you will need. And what I'm doing is I've already squared my fabric, so I'm lining up I'm using the quilter's ruler again, where the six and a quarter mark is at the edge of my square fabric, and putting the mark down, and I'm going to do that along the entire width of the fabric. Once you have both sections of the band mark, go ahead and cut those out on the line. This next part is the only difficult step in making the banded curtain panel. What you're going to do is you have to join the two sections of the band together and making it look like the print has not been broken so it appears as though it is one piece of fabric. And I want to see this line right here, but not this one. So I'm laying it down so that this line is right next to this one. So that this line is right next to this one. And then I'm going to flip it over and sew down this line. So I've got to arrange that so it's right next to it. And put a pin in to hold it in place. At the top and at the bottom. When you get done pressing that open, go ahead and trim your seam allowance back here to 3 8 of an inch. That is going to be the seam allowance that we are going to use. Now you're going to pin the band to the main part of your panel. And you want to pin the band to the side that you're going to swoop the curtain off to. Because eventually you're going to have a band that gathers the curtain and uh, puts it off on the wall. And for this one, it's going to be on the right side for my window, so it's going to go on the right band. Now the measurements are figured so that you will use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And so that's what you want to use when you sew the band to the curtain. I'm just going to make one last check that I did pin it right sides together. You do not want to have to rip out a 7 foot seam, so always check that before you put it through the sewing machine. And I'm just going to... Put it through here. When you're done sewing, go ahead and set your seams by pressing your iron down on them and then press the band open. And you're going to want to press it so that the dark fabric is underneath. Um, in this case, it would be the blue. So I just flip it open so that way the seam is going to be underneath the dark part so it won't show through under the light fabric. And then you're going to cut your lining, and you're going to cut your lining to three quarters of an inch smaller than your finished panel. Um, so in my case, I've got a 35 inch finished panel, so I'm going to cut my lining to 34 and one quarter inches. Now you want to lay your curtain out on a flat surface and take your lining and place it so that it's right sides together over the curtain. Here I put my right sides together 
and I'm lining up the top and the side so that the corners meet. Like so. I'll put a pin in. Once you've pinned the side, you can go ahead and start sewing. But one thing you'll want to do before you do that is practice a little bit with the scraps from the extra that you've cut off. And when you're finished sewing this seam, go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. And remember, your lining is going to be smaller than the panel right now, and that's the way it's supposed to be. All right, we are in the home stretch. Once you get your both ends sewn together, turn it and flip it inside out, and that will form the self hem so that you've already got it all ready to go. So now all we have to do is take a sewing gauge and make sure that you've got about one inch of fabric uh, on that's folded over onto the back with the self hem. And I'm just putting a little pin in once I know that it's at one inch on each side. Now you're gonna press the seam that you just pinned to one inch and hold it down for a good amount of time so that way it just gets a real good crease in there removing pins as you go. Now we're going to make a double hem for the rod pocket that the curtain rod is going to go in. And we're going to take the top of our fabric, so flip it over and make sure that you are indeed working with the top. You don't want to put this at the bottom. And we're going to take our gauge again and this time we're going to set it to two and a half inches. And first, starting at the side, I'm going to fold down two and a half inches and pin it in place. And I'm going to do that across the entire top. Now I'm going to change the gouge back down to two inches and we're going to fold the bottom half inch under to form our double hem. Grab a pin here. Now I switched to a walking foot for this part of the sewing because there's a lot of layers going through this with the double hem. I have also changed the stitch length to zero for the first couple because we're going to stitch very close to the edge of the double hem and I just really want to anchor those first stitches in there and have a couple in the same spot so that way they don't come out when it's on the curtain rod. Now it's time to get your tape measure back out and we're going to line it up at the end again and for me it's at 84 and a half inches is where is that how long I need my curtain to be. So I've lined up the 84 and a half inch mark at the top of the curtain and I'm going to put a pin at the side right where the top comes and then do the same thing on the other side of the curtain and then we're going to fold it up. Now using the pins as our guide we're going to make another double hem with the pins being the bottom of the curtain where it's going to hit the floor. So I've got it folded up so that the pin is at the very bottom. And this time, instead of doing two inches, like we did for the rod pocket, we're going to make it four inches. And this is where if you have a little extra on top, it's not a big deal. Um, just fold it all under, and this is where you can make your bottom nice and even. Now, once you get it all pinned, you have the final step before you can hang your curtain, and that's sewing the bottom hem. And again, I'm using a walking foot for this because we do have a lot of layers going through the sewing machine. And I've set my stitch length to zero to anchor the first stitch, and I'm also going to do that at the end. And now that I'm getting sewing, I'm moving it back up to about three on my machine. And when I get to the end, I'm setting my stitch length to zero and tapping that in place. You just want to press your top and bottom hems, give a nice good crease, and then you can hang your curtain rod and it's done. Once you do hang your curtain on the curtain rod, you want to go to and just buy a coordinating tie back, and you can get that at any fabric store that sells home decor fabric, and that will hold your panel back when you don't want your curtains closed.